Le sujet que je vais aborder porte sur les I am going to tell you about the encouragement, encouragement mechanisms for renewable energy to allow wind and solar power production. All European countries, including France, are trying to develop renewable energies because they are low carbon energy or no carbon energies and they help us find climate change. If we look at the objective of the uh, energy transition law, which is adopted by the French Parliament in 2014, we see that the government wants, by 2030, renewable energies, especially wind and solar energy, to represent 40% of our power supply. This will contribute to reduce the consumption of primary energy between now and 2050, and also we will reduce gas, uh, greenhouse effect ga uh, gas emissions. Trouble is, renewable energies are not competitive with their competitors, so we have to support them. And there are several mechanisms uh, to support renewable energies. En fait, there are many three mechanisms. Premier, the first one is known as uh, the feed-in tariffs, guaranteed prices. Very simple principle. The government will oblige an operator, actually in France, EDF, to buy renewable energies injected, injected into the grid at a fixed price, which has been set by the public administration, a relatively good price, higher than the market price. There is a market price for power for electrical power every year. The price is negotiated on the market. Now, the production cost of renewable energy is higher than the market price, and EDF must sign a contract, a 15-year contract, whereby it will buy this uh, renewable energy at a high price. And because the price is higher than the market price, the overcost will be distributed among all the uh, consumers of electrical power through a tax called uh, Contribution to the Public Service of Electrical Power Supply, except that this contribution increases regularly every year in European countries. The second mechanism is the feed-in premium system. This is a different mechanism. Renewable energy producers have the obligation of selling their power on the market at a relatively low price, but as a counterpart, they have a bonus, a premium by megawatt hours, depending on the quantity of power supply they inject in the grid, or a premium by megawatt, depending on the installed power. A this can be said ex ante or ex post. It is either known beforehand or determined afterwards by the government. This is a much more flexible system. And the third mechanism is the uh, bid for tender or auction system. The government will determine the quantity of renewable power that it wants to be installed, and it will then uh, make a bid for tender asking who is prepared to produce the power at the lowest price, and it chooses the lowest price, and as it goes, it will choose uh, higher prices. And when the large, the needed quantity is uh, obtained, how do we retribute the injected power? Either we do the French auction type uh, with a limit price, everybody gets the same price of the last offer that was chosen. Everybody gets the same price. Or else there are the Dutch type auctions. And in this system, everybody gets the price they asked for. This is a slightly different mechanism in as far as it will lead to perverse effect. Some suppliers will regret that they asked too low a price versus their competitors. This is the uh, winner's curse. Someone wins the auction because they uh, asked for the lowest price, except that somebody else was also chosen, although they asked for a higher price. Now, the first system, the feed-in tariff, is the one adopted in Europe, but it led to a number of uh, perverse effects. Reason why in France, in some European countries uh, such as France and Germany, chances are there will be a reform because of the numerous perverse effects caused by this mechanism. The graph shows you the situation. Top left-hand side, we see that power is injected, renewable power, wind or solar energy is injected in the grid. 
si on va vers la this droite, faire baisser le prix sur le marché spot. Power voilà, is uh, paid at a higher price than market price, but this decreases the uh, price on the spot market because it contributes to uh, bring down the spot price, the offer exceeding the demand. And if we go down on the right hand side, we see that this price decrease on the spot market leads us to a different where the uh, overcost between the uh, price paid and the price uh, requested uh, will uh, increase. If we go towards the left, we see that the price paid by the final consumer increases because the price includes the CSPE tax. So renewable energy injection increases the price on the spot market, but it also increases the uh, final, it decreases the spot uh, market price, but it increases the price paid by the final customer. Actually, the tax represents 15% of the final price, so there are two perverse effects, the impact of which should not be underestimated, network grid externalities, also the fact that sometimes we have trouble getting rid of intermittent power, and also uh, the fact that this may lead to problems on the uh, neighboring uh, grid. In Germany, they have trouble bringing the uh, power from the Baltics to uh, Bayern, so they go through Poland or uh, the Czech Republic, causing problems for these two countries, and also the fact that the wind energy or the solar energy is an intermittent type of energy. So we need to find a backup for time when there is no sun or no wind. This is the whole issue of backup systems, uh, power plants, uh, thermal power plants that will provide power when there is no wind or no sun. This graph shows you that that CSPE tax doesn't stop increasing. We're not talking about more than 6.5 uh, million euros. In uh, the CSPE, not everything has to do with wind or solar energy. Part of the tax also covers the uh, over cost uh, for areas that are not interconnected, places like Corsica or uh, overseas territories. But 60% um, of the tax funds the over cost led, linked with uh, renewable energy. So all countries that have been faced with this problem say it's all very well to increase renewable energy consumption, but we have to change the mechanism. The other perverse effect of renewable energies is the switching effect. The switching effect is a translation problem. In electrical power, there is a principle. Power plants will be uh, used uh, in order of uh, price. So we start with the uh, most, uh, the cheapest one. For instance, hydraulic power plants, then nuclear power plants, then coal power plants, then gas power plants, then gas turbines that are kept only as a backup system or for exports. Now, wind and solar energy, electrical power, is injected on the grid at a zero cost. And the curve is shifted to the right. It's a translation issue. And the balance, the break-even price, which was relatively high, 60, 70 euros per megawatt hour in the upper graph, decreases in the lower graph because of excess surplus electricity. And in Europe, sometimes we had negative prices because there was so much electrical power that we didn't know what to do with it. The problem with electrical power is that we don't know how to store it. When there is too much electrical power, sometimes you have to pay somebody to get rid of it. On the spot market, very often Swiss companies are paid to buy surplus electrical power that we don't know what to do with. So we can't blame renewable energies as the only the uh, reason for this problem. There is another problem, the decrease in uh, the demand for electrical power. Because of the economic crisis, we now understand that we have invested too much. We expected an increase in demand for electrical power, but this, this did not happen. And so the demand is remaining relatively stable and even tends to decrease a little. This graph shows that in all European countries, the spot price of electrical power has dropped. In the red, uh, on the red curve, we have the spot uh, price uh, in the German market, then the blue curve is the French uh, price. Actually, the German price is lower than the French price, which might seem paradoxical, but that is due to the fact that in Germany they have too much electrical power, they have an overcapacity in production, then there is uh, England or Italy, prices are higher, but everywhere the curve is going downwards, and the decrease of the price on the spot market has a number of drawbacks, because uh, when the, the prices uh, drop to 70 euros a megawatt hour, 
gas uh, power plants are no longer profitable, they need, must be closed. And if the price goes to 50, 60 megawatt hours, we have to close down the coal power plants. When the price drops to 40, then we need to uh, close the uh, hydraulic uh, power plants. 40 euros per megawatt hour is the uh, production cost of the megawatt hour with uh, nuclear power plants. Four power plants that already have been depreciated. So we're talking about uh, prices that are more or less at the level of uh, nuclear plants, power plants, and coal plants are no longer profitable. We have invested so much that we now have an overcapacity. What can we do? Well, we can reduce the uh, level of feeding tariffs, guarantee prices. We can move to the feeding premium system, and it is a system that is likely to be adopted in the French system. And the third solution would be to organize auctions. Finally, we can also encourage those to, who produce renewable energies uh, to consume part of it. And finally, we can also turn surplus uh, electricity in hydrogen and possibly uh, use it to obtain methane, except that technically and economically speaking, this solution is not good enough, it's not competitive. On the international level, we have observed that all countries are developing renewable energy, solar energy, wind energy, or biomass-derived energy, and uh, the country that makes the highest, the biggest efforts is China, but the European Union is in a good position with intermittent energy, and so are the United States, India, and Brazil, and this is also true for a number of other countries.